Well, joining us is Paula Boyden from uh, HeadVet at the Dogs Trust, which carried out the investigation into puppy smuggling. So this is the dog that you brought in. That's right. This is Mitzi, who's uh, made three successful tr uh, journeys without being identified as a uh, fake. As a uh, fake dog. Well, I, mean... I was always under the impression that actually our borders, particularly when it came to animals being imported and coming across borders, that actually we're pretty strict, we're pretty stringent. We haven't had cases of rabies for over 100 years, something like that. And, and we have passports for animals now and chips. The real shock to me that actually your experience has been very different and we're hearing more about these puppies being smuggled. Yes, yes, very much so. The, the checks at the ports are very much administrative checks. So they're very much about checking the paperwork, checking that the microchip number tallies with the, 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 the passport and that the appropriate treatments are certified in the appropriate time. Mm. Uh, but there's no visual sighting of the animals required at all. So explain what you did with Mitzi then. So we put Mitzi into a carrier. Uh, we attached the... Like a little plus, you know, like, like a, sort of carriers you see on right, trains. And and also, yeah, so yeah. We attached the microchip to the inside of that basket uh, and because part of the requirement uh, the process is that you as the owner are handed the microchip scanner we scanned the basket obviously the microchip was identified we hand that back to the uh, carrier operative uh, and then they can check the, the passport to make sure everything's okay so you know how much more could they do then I mean obviously they could open the basket and check but we can see that there's a lot of pressure on ports mm -hmm. uh, Calais where you brought Mitzi there's your soft toy through I mean they're having trouble stopping human beings coming through and people coming through aren't they they've got an awful lot on their plate Absolutely. so are we perhaps expecting too much I think what we we ought to be expect we can't expect that every single dog that comes through the port is going to uh, have a full check um, right. we're obviously in school holidays now there's lots of people traveling however bear in mind this is the pet travel scheme this is non-commercial movement so somebody bringing in five puppies um, I would term that abnormal activity how many people do you know go out and buy themselves five puppies mm. so what we'd like to see is something a little bit more intelligence led um, so that if somebody is presenting five puppies that that should be putting a flag to get an animal health professional in there but if it's a fake passport pups. and fake microchip what can they do? Um, certainly, because they, they're obviously puppies, but the big problem is these puppies are coming in at very, very young ages. So they're being brought in at eight and ten weeks, whereas the minimum age by law is 15 weeks. Right, so they should spot that at least. Absolutely. Yeah. And like I so said, we're not expecting the operatives to identify that themselves, but just the fact that you've got passports with very young puppies, mm. that should be the flag to get somebody in to have a look at it. The Department for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs says the UK is one of the toughest regimes in the EU when it comes to checking pets at the border. They say microchips can be scanned through carrier boxes which is why the dogs aren't always seen but you're suggesting that maybe actually that's fundamentally where they should need to change their process yes ab absolutely the carriers are doing what's asked of them but it's what's being asked is it's purely administrative and that, that and that's where part of the problem lies okay, okay. paula okay. boyden thanks very much for joining us this morning My pleasure.